Do you know there are almost 2 kilograms of bacteria and other microorganisms that are living within and upon you at the moment? In this video, we'll introduce you to the different types of microorganisms that live in and on us. You'll get to know where do we get these microbes from and how do these microbes change through the different stages of our life? Welcome back to Science Soup. As promised earlier, in this video, we are going to talk about microorganisms that live in and on us. Here we are, me with lots of questions. And me with the answers. We'll try to keep the science as simple as possible because if science is not your cup of tea, here comes your bowl of Science Soup. 2 kilograms of microorganisms. Yes, trillions of microorganisms. Well, these are really very thrilling number if not scary. So, could you tell us what microorganisms are? As the name suggests, microorganisms or microbes are tiny microscopic creatures that cannot be seen by our naked eyes. The terms microorganisms or microbes are used to describe a variety of life forms that includes bacteria, viruses, fungi, protozoans and archaea. When you say trillions of microorganisms, does it include all of them? Well, it includes most of these and they are collectively known as the microbiota. But the most abundant of these microorganisms are bacteria. Oh my god, I know bacteria cause diseases. Yes. And uh, as far as I am aware, I am a healthy person. So I suppose you are talking about the people who are suffering from some kind of diseases. No, I am talking about all of us and I am not at all surprised by your reaction. Because most of us think of bacteria as disease causing or food spoiling organisms. But there are good bacteria as well. And every one of us have a unique set of good bacteria that keep us stay healthy. So there are these bacteria or microorganisms or microbes that make our microbiota. And this microbiota is good for our health. So the big question comes in my mind now is where are these bacteria in our body? They are on our skin, in our ears, in our eyes, in our nose. They are everywhere. Everywhere? Yes, apparently everywhere. Another fascinating fact is that the set of microbes that make up the microbiota is unique for every individual. They are as unique as our fingerprints. Even the microbes present in both our hands are not the same. That's quite interesting. So, where do we get these microbes from? The first dose of our microbiota came from our lovely mother. We picked some of the microorganisms while travelling through her birth canal to see the outside world for the first time. In fact, several studies suggest that children born surgically have a different set of initial microbiota than children delivered normally. Recent research has shown that there is a higher risk of asthma, type 1 diabetes and obesity in children born surgically and scientists are linking this risk to the initial microbiota that we acquire from our mother at the time of our birth. Does that mean the natural process of giving birth is important for the health of a baby? Not necessarily. There are so many other factors involved. While getting a baby delivered naturally or surgically may be a matter of medical intervention or sometimes even a personal choice, the suggested link between microbiota and the delivery process cannot be ignored. However, this is a newer area of research and a lot is yet to be discovered. So the first dose of microbiota come from our mother and which is very important. And then? Just after coming out into this world, we started getting exposed to millions of microbes that are present in our environment. So the place where we were born also had a significant impact on our initial microbiota. Studies suggest that children born at home have a different set of microbiota than children born in hospitals. The next set of microbes came from our mother's milk that helped us in digestion. Newborn babies have a very low number of microbes that either come from their mother or from the close environment where they live. 
As babies grow, they get more microbes from the places they visit, the food they eat and the people they meet. The population of these microbes keep changing throughout different stages of our lives. It changes during puberty, during pregnancy, during different kinds of illnesses and their treatment. It also changes when we have a major change in our food habits or lifestyle and the list goes on and on. The number of these microbes starts declining when a person gets older. These age-related changes in the microbiota may be linked with the common conditions often associated with the elderly. Okay, so the type of microbiota of a person as a child, as an adult and as an elderly person keeps changing. Yes, certainly. And it also depends on our lifestyle and our food habits. Exactly. It's amazing to know so many microbes live within me and now if ever I will feel lonely I will just think about these little creatures who are living with me all the time. Yes, and you can call them your microbial friends. Well, yes, I can call them my microbial friends. Uh, but still, I don't understand how they are helping us. You know, uh, we are giving them shelter to live, we are giving them food to eat, but what they are doing to us, I don't know. Yes, we indeed give food and shelter to them, but as a matter of fact, they are essential for our own health. Our body needs them for so many vital functions that are crucial to our life. To know what all they can do, stay tuned for our next video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big fat thumbs up and subscribe to our channel Sciency Soup. And also press the bell icon to get notified every time we publish a new video. Science matters to all of us and we bring it to you in very simple language. Because if science is not your cup of tea, here comes your bowl of Sciency Soup. Bye for now. Take care. Stay curious.